dignity and justice for all. Thank you, Troop 460. We appreciate it. And I see we have a bunch of Girl Scouts here. Ladies, if you ever want to do that, just let us know ahead of time. We'd be glad to incorporate you into the meeting. All right, up first, approval of the council minutes. We have the November 6th regular meeting as well as the closed session. I will move we accept those. Second. Second from Bob. Any discussion? I, uh, I think Leslie uh, Dickinson's name is misspelled. What, did they spell it Lindy Brown again? No, no, they spelled it Dickerson. Dickerson, yeah, it's Dickinson. So, I'll tell yeah. Colleen. Okay. 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 Right. Other than that. Not a big deal. Okay, I, I will change my motion with uh, to be accepting both sets of minutes with that name change spelling. Bob, you seconding as well? He is. All in favor, say aye. 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 Looks unanimous to me. Uh, police chief's report. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Here to present the chief's report uh, for the month of November. Uh, during the month of November, we participated in four meetings and trainings. Uh, as our community outreach, we also participated in Frederick County with the Frederick County Optimist Club uh, in their Shop with a Cop program. Uh, during that time, they, they served over 30, 30 youth uh, that would not have a great Christmas otherwise. They, we shopped with them. Uh, they were given $120 worth in Walmart gift certificates, gift cards, and they, they purchased gifts from, for their family members and so forth. Uh, the, the event was very well attended. There were several, we were one of several police departments that were represented in that. And in, in the immediate future, we will be having one for the Carroll County side of Mount Area as well. So that's, that's up and coming. Um, secondly, we had, had a meeting with uh, Jonathan Lapore, who is an individual that's expressed interest in volunteering. One of, the interested, one of the interested parties volunteering with the police department. And we were discussing a reserve police unit and chaplaincy programs uh, to start with the police department. Um, so we're in the process of looking into that and, and getting, getting that started and ramped up. Uh, calls for service for the month. Uh, we handled 517 calls or events for the month. Uh, out of those events, we had one hit and run <coughs> accident, uh, eight accidents with involving property damage, one with injury, nine business alarms, uh, one hold-up alarm, four residential alarms, two animal complaints, two assaults, uh, three assist fire departments, nine assist other departments. Um, we had 11 bank checks, three controlled dangerous substance violations, uh, six welfare checks, three civil disturbances, one debris in a roadway call, uh, two destruction of property, one disabled vehicle, one, two disorderlies, uh, five domestic disputes, two fights in progress, two firearms complaints, uh, eight follow-up investigations, 33 foot patrols, seven fraud and forgery investigations, nine general traffic complaints, one harassment, uh, one peace order service, five juvenile complaints, two recovered property, lost and found, uh, three ATV complaints, three missing person investigations, one noise complaint, one open burning complaint, two parking complaints, uh, four peace order services, uh, six police information calls, two protective order services, 11 school checks, four solicitors complaints, three special assignments, three suicide threats, two summons services, 43 suspicious vehicles, 13 thefts, three traffic hazards, one trespassing complaint, one unattended death investigation, 48 uh, reported vehicle stops, and two were uncoded. Uh, again, that's for a total of 517 events. Uh, during the month, as far as traffic enforcement, we had 78 total traffic stops with 118 total violations with one DUI arrest. We issued 34 traffic citations, 64 warnings, and 20 equipment repair orders. Uh, as far as criminal enforcement for the month, we made six criminal arrests in Frederick County, four criminal arrests in Carroll County for a total of 10. Uh, we preferred 23 total criminal charges. We issued one criminal citation. Uh, we had a total of eight civil citations that were issued and five criminal summons services. Uh, also, I provided for the board, we did have overdose summary information. We had two reported overdoses. One was fatal and one did involve fentanyl and heroin. Uh, so just want to bring that to your attention. And also, I've also provided you the K-9 report for the month. Our K-9 was active uh, in three separate arrests and he also did some Girl Scout tours. 
and he attended uh, training and had an interview with one of the local news stations. So. Anybody have any questions? Wow. It's been a busy month. Good. I got one question. Is it, can you quickly, I think the question that I get asked, sorry, <laughs> I think the question that I get asked the most from residents out there is, under what circumstances do you operate outside of the town limits? We have, we just recently signed an MOU with the county. Uh, we have special deputy privileges in Carroll County, or we will as soon as we get that all, all lined up. But it's basically based upon mutual aid. Um, if someone calls and the county sheriff's departments need our assistance, they call us directly. Uh, or if, if we're close by, they usually see if we're close by. If there's an extended uh, ETA or something like that from the sheriff's department, they will ask us. So if, if we get the request from the county, we will be going. So, but it's got to go through them. Yeah, can we do my turn? Stop moving. Just don't move it. Just don't keep moving, moving it. it. Don't touch it. <laughs> we can discuss offline, but it's always my understanding if it was a level one crime or serious crime, we'd go out, outside of the state. I mean, since we are we have such a dedicated force, I want to be careful that our taxpayers aren't paying to police outside of our borders unless it is, in fact, a serious crime, because there's always going to be occurrences where they're not, as, they're not going to be as close as we're going to be. Right. And then we're going to get into a whole different issue. Right. So I would like to back that down a little bit and maybe have a discussion offline. Right. That, actually, that, that, re, that request has to come from the county under mutual aid agreements. We have to be requested. We just can't arbitrarily just go. No, e even, but even if they request, I don't want to right. become the county police force. Correct. On Correct. the taxpayers. Right. Unless it's a level one crime. <laughs> Scott got here 15 minutes early. And, and did it, huh? <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Chief, uh, and, and I'll ask the other council members to weigh in on this. Test. Uh, it, I don't see anything that breaks down uh, traffic stops between Frederick County and Carroll <laughs> County. Is that something that could be added to the report and do any of the other council members? Uh, we may be are you okay with that. that, with adding that to the report? I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, I guess to me, I, I mean, because the, the line is the yellow line up here on Main Street, you know, which mm -hmm. side of the street does this guy stop his car on? It's where the traffic incident is. I'm, okay. You know. Is it logistically hard to do? Uh, I don't know if the ETIX uh, system is, can, will permit that or allow that might be something that we have to go in and actually hand search all the cit citations or something. So maybe to or find a happy medium, if it's easily done, easily yeah. provided. Perhaps yeah, the system could, spits it out for free with no work. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, if, we can, if we can do that, see how many. But if, it, if it requires time, maybe. Yeah. maybe and I'm sure Larry would agree if it to requires a lot of labor. He probably to what value? To what value? What are we, I, what are we I think it's something that, uh, you know, and I, you know, I have a, a group of friends I eat breakfast right. with. I got the. Uh, uh, you know, a few other people who have asked me questions over time as to, uh, you know, uh, if the police are spending more time Carroll County side, Frederick County side, I always answer them with they're spending all their time in Mount Airy. <laughs> nice so answer. wherever That's the problem answer. is, Good is answer. where they're going. Good answer. But if, it, if it's easy to break it out, great. If it's not, don't I'll even worry I'll look into it about and see what we can okay? do. All right. Chief, I, I just have one job, other though. comment. I do appreciate the overdose that's information. Not, yeah. I think that's really important for us um, to see if we can provide you with any other additional needs. And then the other thing I really liked was the canine activity. I think that's really important too, so that we can see that that's a useful amenity to the force and then our town. Thank so thank, thank you. you very much for doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Next, Great fire job. Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company report. Bruce, is that you? The uh, police chief gave a very detailed report, but he didn't mention about uh, sending his officers to arrest our paid crew over the alleged theft, alleged <laughs> theft of uh, pumpkin pies from the police department <laughs> by the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> there were our well. pies, and you got your pies. Yeah, some, some Thanksgiving shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm president of the fire company. I look on a the picture there, and there's my paid guys in handcuffs. So. Uh, <laughs> Our incident report for November in Carroll County rescue calls, we had 91, 51 in Frederick, one in Montgomery for a total of 143 calls for EMS service. Fire calls, we had 12 in Carroll, 
13 in Frederick, one in Howard for a total of 25 or 26 calls, resulting in 103 calls for service in Carroll, 64 in Frederick, one in Howard, and one in Montgomery for 169 calls. And I'd like to remind everybody that um, Santa stopped by uh, yesterday for our open house, and he's going to come back on his another trip down from the North Pole, and he will be at the reception hall on the 17th for our big country breakfast with Santa. So if you didn't get your list in in time, here's your second chance for that. And this will be my last report to the council. I'm not seeking re-election as president, and we will have a new Aww. president elected on Thursday. Uh, I will continue to serve through the end of the year. Uh, but after four years, I decided it was time to step down and let someone else take over that uh, responsibility. Thank, so thank you for your, your years of service to the thank community. You, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. We count thank on you. And Bruce, thank, thank you for letting us use your facilities for the uh, volunteer dinner the other day. We, we, we greatly appreciate having those facilities available to the town. Yeah, I'm sure they're next on the list. All right, uh, we've got two, two special guests here tonight. Um, Roger, I'll bring you up first. Roger Wilson is here as, a, I guess, a government liaison from Frederick County. Is that the proper term? Yeah, you got it. You and got he's it. also, yeah, he's, yeah, also he's, he's now an alderman in Frederick City. Uh, alderman elect, election. yes. He is now yes. the Honorable <laughs> Roger Wilson. He has been elected, and yeah. he's a Frederick City alderman. Yeah, served a couple roles in the county. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Um, Mayor and council members, uh, it's good to be in Mount Airy tonight. And all the residents of Mount Airy, good to see you. It's good to see so many young people out to experience democracy at work and from their local government. So good to see you. Keep coming. Keep coming back. All right. Uh, County Executive wishes, um, since our best wishes in this holiday season, uh, be safe on the roads. Uh, and just remind you that uh, she's here uh, if you need her. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I had. If you had any other questions. Just send our warmest regards to her and thank her for her service to our town, and we appreciate your service. And we all congratulate you on your recent election as alderman to Frederick uh, City. Yes, that's right. Um, they're lucky to have you, sir. Yeah, thank you, yeah, Mayor. You're welcome. Congratulations. Good Thanks, Roger. Guys. Congratulations. Thanks, Roger. Thanks. And up next, we've got uh, Tony Schmeller. Uh, Tony, I always can't remember, is it Commissioner or is it? Because they change. Because they change. They change. They change. Councilman. Councilman. It's okay. Councilman. District two. Where okay. You, I am. You're, I know you're. You're a Frederick County Councilman. Uh, I was. I, I tend I to am. think commissioner from the old. Yes. yes terminology. And I'm, and I'm honored to be your council member. And Thank you very much. Very much appreciate it. And uh, and I like. I'd like to echo Roger's sentiment here of these young folks coming out to uh, participate in our local government and would definitely encourage you as you grow older to please don't stop because we, we need you more and more every day. So likewise, I just came to wish you a, a Merry Christmas coming up. I haven't been here in a while. I have been paying attention. I'd like to apologize for not being here uh, for the installation of the new police force and the new police chief. Thing. I, I hear things are going really well and I was happy to see that. And as always, I just extend to you, there's anything that I can do as your council member, anybody in the community. Uh, and on the Frederick County side, I'm sorry, I can't help half the folks here that are from Carroll County. Uh, but we do strive to, or I do strive to, help all the constituents as best as I can in whatever services that we might be able to help them with. Thank you, Tony. Thanks. Tony, Appreciate we feel it. the same about your service. And actually, you apologize, but you're the only uh, councilman that we ever see down here. So <laughs> we do appreciate you coming by. And he does look out for Carroll County. In fact, he brought an economic development coordinator down here one time for some uh, coordination in between Main Street, where it stretches over to Carroll County, where Carroll County could actually benefit from Frederick County. You're still talking? Yeah, we're still talking. Awesome. That's so, great. And to we hear. appreciate you doing that. We appreciate your service. And Merry Christmas to you, too. Thanks, well. guys. Appreciate it. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you, Tony. All right, up next. <laughs> up next, we have community concerns, citizen comments. Now, the, the council has recently gone through some classes on how to manage meetings, how to handle agendas. So I don't know if you've noticed, we've made a few changes in the agendas here. Um, the purpose of the community comments, citizen concerns, is for citizens to come up and speak to the council on topics. It's not for the purpose of questioning the council or asking the, uh, asking the council about issues. Basically, it's if there's an issue you want to speak to us about, it's your time to come up. If there's anybody who wants to speak on something, I, I'd ask that you raise your hand so we can see what kind of timing we're looking at. Okay, we got one, we got Rick, anybody else? Two, Roxanne. 
And to clarify, questions are okay, but we'll probably defer them to where we can go back and do the proper research and make sure you get the right answers instead of trying to answer things on the fly without the proper information in front of us. Now what we're going to do, a little change this month, and we're going to see how these, we're going to try different things as we go through the process. When we actually get to ordinances and resolutions, um, we are not going to allow, as we have in the past, a citizen back and forth with the council unless you're on the commission that deals with that topic. For example, we've got a planning item on here. So people from the planning commission, they will essentially Scott, uh, sir, yeah. what, what we were told in our class is oh, that I'm basically our commission members in a small town like this are kind of like our paid staff. So just like for an issue we might call it Barney or Heather or, or, or Monica or Charlene on an issue that's theirs, in a smaller town like this, uh, our commission members really fulfill that purpose. So we would interact with them in that point. But if you have something you want to address the council on, this would be the time to do it. Um, I only saw two hands, so Rick and... Roxanne, you know the. I think Carl is up. Carl, you. I didn't see him raise his hand. I, I'm just. I was going to speak on the charter resolution, but are you still? Are I would do it at this point. I got what he said. Okay, so we got three. Okay. Um, Roxanne that's, had Yeah, I, that's why I wanted to make that announcement that we're 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 trying to change format. We've kind of discussed it. We had the the mayor brought someone in and did a great class on it, so we're trying to sort things out. Thanks, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. Roxanne Hempel, 605 Park Avenue. Um, this is something I brought to the mayor, and I apologize. I didn't send you an email to remind you. Um, but the other evening I was out, um, I noticed a gentleman, actually a gentleman walking his dog and also a lady walking their dog. The animal had no, and it was after dark. I almost hit both of them because they were so close to the road. There was no reflective um, apparel on the dog or on the owner and I want to remind everybody if you're walking your dog please put some reflective something reflective on yourself as well as the animal because one of these dogs was a, a black lab so it, it's 6 30 at, at night and I couldn't see the dog um, and it's very important please so everybody when you're walking your dog and it's after dark please wear a reflective gear and also put something on your dog thank you Thanks, Roxanne. Thanks, Roxanne. Thanks, Roxanne. It's worth repeating. Rick? Hi, Rick Blatchford at uh, Nottingham. I want to talk to the council. It seems to me for the umpteenth time. I sat at home the last two council meetings, and you know what I'm going to say? I bet some of you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> the mayor knows. Well. That's one of them. Um, there's a major issue which may not be the council. It might be in this room back here, or it may be at the county. But I talked to someone at the employee appreciation dinner who agreed with me that if you listen to this meeting on TV, you have to turn the volume on your set all the way up. I do, this other person did, and I see a head going back and forth. Well, it's not my TV because it plays plenty loud. I don't know what the problem is, but somebody needs to look at it, you know, here, the county, or whatever. Uh, secondly, to make that problem worse, there are two people at the council table who have no problems, and I'm not going to name any names. Um, there are three who tend to sit back in their chair away from their mic sometimes, not all the time. And thirdly, we are not consistent when somebody in the audience has something to say. They say it from their chair and don't come up here to the podium. And you really can't hear that at home, so you hear half the conversation and you get to guess. That's one person at the table's responsibility. That needs to be, ad not you. <laughs> that needs to be addressed. Uh, my hearings needs to be enhanced sometimes, but not when I'm at home with my TV. Uh, so the bottom line is if you really, really want people at home to know what's going on, use your mics. And since it's already been addressed, there's one person at the table who likes to shove his microphone over to the councilman sitting next to him. I have, <laughs> yeah. Per, re, per that request. Side, that side of you. Per request. Uh, that, that, that you are sometimes difficult to hear because of that. Just pointing it out, if you care, let's work on it. 
Thank, Thank you. you, Rick. We Thanks. Appreciate that. Carl? Happy that I gave my seat, seat up to the Girl Scouts to have a place to sit. So that's why I that's was great. saying I wasn't going to do gentleman. that. So. <laughs> Hello, my name is Carl Munder, 2002, Philbrook Lane, Mount Airy, Maryland. I've just, I'm here since it seems to be a little bit changed the way we need to speak now on, I guess the best way to explain is Ordinance 2017-20, the pay raise and charter amendment change is the best way to describe it, is I'm not totally, I'm not against the pay raise ordinance at, at all. I just believe that it's a little confusing on, say, in the Ordinance 2017-20, Section C on page 2, it's kind of confusing because it says the effective date of the compensation change shall take effect for an elected office for which an ordinance has changed compensation immediately after approval by a majority of those voting on the referendum, which is understandable and easy to understand. Then it says to be held in the next town election after passage, or if the ordinance is passed by the town council after the March regular meeting immediately preceding the next election in the section in the second election following passage of the ordinance. What does that mean? What is that last sentence? The concern was raised by, I think, the uh, Debbie and uh, perhaps Bruce it was, that if you had a, uh, an ordinance that got passed too close to the next election, you would not have time for that election to get it on to the ballot as okay. a ballot question. So okay. I think that, that in discussion, sort of, I think it was March, was sort of your cutoff. If you mm -hmm. pass it, for instance, in an eight, if the council passed it in an April meeting, it would be too late to get it on a ballot for May. Not from a timing perspective. So. Okay. Right. Cool. I think it'll be explained in greater detail when we get to it. But yeah, yeah that's good, why good question. Yeah, just also, it's just, is there any reason why there's not a set number? put in the ordinance, like say another base level pay, instead of just blank amount, like you say X amount, then a future council can come by and say, oh, we're gonna raise it by another X, X amount for your salary. Shouldn't it be just to protect citizens taxes and to pay to say, have a set pay, say 7,000, and the next time somebody comes and raises it, says it can only be raised by Inflation or or CPI or something that that Scott. way it kind of guards against the potential for another council farther down coming and say oh well you know we want a seven thousand dollar raise Scott something. do you want to address that when we actually get get to the item on the agenda yeah. okay okay that's it thanks. all right thanks that's Carl it. anybody okay. else okay let's move on Charter Amendment 2017-2 referendum on pay raises as well as Char Ordinance 2017-20 um, which goes with that. Um, they're, they're yours, Scott. You want to move them both in? Yeah, I'd like to move both in at the same time. I will, I will second for the point of discussion. Um, I guess we really don't have any um, commissions that cover this topic, so <laughs> it's all us. Okay. So I guess... Sorry. Well, they wouldn't... Yeah. Yeah. I guess just uh, to cover this for a little bit... Um, I want to clarify a couple things because people have been asking questions. So up for your uh, consideration and approval tonight is Ch Charter Amendment 2017-2 along with Ordinance 2017-20, which cleans up the town code so that it doesn't have to be amended each time compensation for any elected official is made. In addition, it also addresses the challenges town staff currently faces for managing the resulting staggered compensation changes that occur from it. While our code today works. The main purpose of this was to uh, propose changes um, that'll make things better. Um, what we're trying to do is alleviate um, the problem staff is having with dealing with the additional overhead for multiple councilman salaries at different times. Um, currently right now the way the town code will work is that if we end up approving any type of change up or down, town staff will have to deal with two separate rates. This would potentially take care of that so that uh, pending public approval that the the individuals who are not being reelected for their seats or are going to retain their seats would have the opportunity to have that same change whether it went up or down. Um, I personally believe um, that um, there is a problem in government where 
Um, a specific case that caused me to start looking at this was with Congress, where they had turned around and voted for themselves to have raises. Nobody oversaw it. Meanwhile, they're trying to do the budget, and they can't end up getting the budget done, but they can pass a raise for themselves. So I thought that was a problem, and I thought that if the public had a say in it and said, basically, do your job, or you're not going to get any type of raise, then they'd do their job, and they need to earn that. Um, so I think uh, no individual should be able to give themselves a raise, especially when they can't do the job. Um, I think that uh, another point that was made about this was with regards to any type of giving away of power that the council has. Um, to address that and clarify, there's a difference between power and decision making. Um, so while they're sometimes interchanged, um, they do mean different things. I personally ran for office not for power, but to make decisions to try and make the town better. And so that's what I want to try and focus on with this. Um, these changes don't take away any of the decision making that the town has now. The proposed change, again, only allows for individuals who are going to remain in their seat to have that same type of change. Uh, newly elected individuals coming in will get whatever that change is when that seat is open and they are elected into that position. Um, so I guess mainly I'll close with the fact that I implore each of you to support the proposed changes that are in here because if you want to lessen the burden faced by town staff, you think that we should not be able to give ourselves raises without public agreement and you want to uphold the belief that we should be publicly held accountable to the citizens of Mount Airy that we are elected to represent, then there should be no other choice. Can the council still give themselves raises? That doesn't change. That, that doesn't change at all. The council can still get themselves raised. The, count, the council the and the mayor have can to. propose a raise, and it would have to be done by ordinance. So the way we've done it right now is that the code and the question was asked, why don't we put in a specific amount in here? The ordinance sure. would be that amount. The charter just covers these are the rules that we'd abide by. When the amount is but discussed, it would be the ordinance we, change. We don't get a raise until after a referendum. We don't get a – no. No. So right now the way it is worded is that – so I'm going to do real world example. You three up for election for your next term. If we make a change right now today, none of us see that raise current today with the code. When your seats are up for election, mm -hmm. those three seats, whoever fills them, would get the raise. Yep. The seats on this side of the table, whatever was proposed, will not see it until these seats are up for election. Correct. This change allows the public to determine whether it's a increase or decrease in salary that these three seats to have speed it up. It to, to speed, speed it up, up and right. in, enforce it for this side so that the town's operating as they a can whole. Speed up. The council still votes their own race. It, Correct. But, but, it but, doesn't but, allow them. It insists that they vote. Which, by the way, the council mayor have not had a raise in 10 years. Yeah, he's, yeah. Not since but I, it, but this, anybody does this for the money. But, but I, I'm making this clear, too. It's, it's not just raises. This isn't a pay raise ordinance it goes both ways so if it is a decrement in salary not that we all want that but if it was and that was what was decided by this body and elected or uh, uh, voted on then the public would have the opportunity to say yeah we agree with you or no we don't and the seats that aren't up for election they would either have that determination or not but those seats go into effect and then even when these seats are elected they would go into effect so hopefully that clarified Tom, I don't know if I said anything inaccurate. Nope. I mean, that's as written how, how it worked. Basically allows through referendum to make uniform immediately after the referendum any increase or decrease in compensation for all council members at once rather than have the situation where three have it for two years and then the next two, whoever fill those spots, have to wait another two years after that for yet another election. Now this completely replaces the old system. So, right. so it doesn't so replace it. Doesn't, it. Not it doesn't it doesn't replace it. It actually just adds just a mechanism to speed it up. It speeds it up and it allows the, the old public system to determine if it's well, set up or not. So if the referendum isn't passed, you simply revert to what the system is no. today. Nothing changes. Right, but but what I'm saying is but everything has to go by referendum. No. No. Just the seats that aren't being well, elected. any pay raise, any pay raise or has to go to a referendum. Have to go to a referendum to determine whether everybody right. gets so it at yeah, once exactly. or whether right, it's but going not. To be but so regardless not. of that, the raise still goes in effect for but, the but election. But for every the other every raise goes as a referendum. It does well. Well, I now it, it doesn't. As it goes now, 
you get a raise and then you have to stand for election before you get it. No, no, it goes, it goes into effect upon the election. So we're even if we, do, if we voted for a raise right now today, two years goes by, we're not getting a raise next year. We don't get right. a raise the year after that. We have right. to be reelected into the seat, and then that seat, whether you're elected or not, no. gets the raise. What I'm saying is, as it is, okay, if, uh, under this, un, let me see, under the proposed ordinance, mm -hmm. uh, any uh, pay raise would go by referendum. Yes. It's a replacement Bef of the current system. Be before, because yes, I, I will say I yes for the simple fact. That's not what he's asking. For. Well, no, it, it, it would mandate a ref any change in compensation by ordinance would mandate a referendum. The question being, does everybody get it now or does, is it staggered later. like we currently have? So the referendum so is only, I, I agree with the yes, right. but it's only but, for but, the individual. But, but there is no, there's, there's, but there's, there's no, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. A referendum doesn't block the pay That's rate. No, okay. it doesn't it block only, it. It, it, only defa it defaults you, to the individual. It only decides how much so faster really you get given, it. It's not really given to the citizens the voice to stop the raise. No, right. it's, it's just, just given the time. They it's think that everybody should get it or no, they don't. Wait, wait, the meeting gets more exciting. You don't Thanks. Thank you for coming. So I think Jason's and then Bob. Jason. I have a, is, uh, so who on the town staff does our pay raises or pay? Is it Charlene? That's Charlene. Is it, would this difficulty of the staggering of the raises, you're saying no? No. Okay. Yeah, all, of, okay. all other town office or all other town employees would pay different rates, right? Okay. Bob, or well, if you're done, Jason. Um, that's the only question I have. We, the citizens already have this right <clears throat> to a referendum, and I'm not sure what you'd call it because it's not a referendum. A referendum requires the citizens to go out and meet a certain threshold. Okay. They're gone. To, we lost our audience. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> there goes the younger voters, right? They, they, have to, they have to meet a certain threshold. Right, right now, we three would get it. Two years from now, you, you guys would get it, or vice versa. Um, it's the way it's done in most areas in the United States right now. Is, but a <coughs> referendum is when the citizens stand up and follow particular protocols to force a vote. They already have that right with this. You're, you're not giving them anything that they al don't already have, but you're making them come to the polls and vote on it. Okay, so it's not something they can pick and choose from. Um, on, the, on the first night this was introduced, we were talking about each councilman, if he got a $1,000 raise, so that would be $5,000, and the mayor got a, a $2,000 raise, so that would be a $7,000 budget item that we would be discussing at a meeting. Total. 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 $7,000 total. We talked at that later on in that meeting about one point seven million dollars in in things. Um, we had fifteen fifty seven for uh, network computer systems for I guess our new website. Um, with two hundred thousand dollars for the police build out on the on the bank on the uh, Center Street headquarters. Yeah, the rail station. The rail station. Three hundred and three thousand dollars for. I'm sorry. Three hundred and three thousand dollars for nutrient removal at one of the plants. Um, Four hundred and sixty thousand dollars to to paint a water tower. Okay. What's your point? Um, we're the we have this little teeny item that is that is our salaries. And it's not really our salaries. It compensates you for the ink and the paper and, and the mileage that you put on your car. And that's what it used to be, am I correct? And this was just an easier way to do it 15 years ago, so it changed. I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to pass this because I don't want to throw our decision onto the public, okay, and, and make them vote the smallest budget item. It's been. 10 years since we've had a raise, okay? So this is not a budget item that's gonna come up very often. And this teeny tiny budget item, we want to force the citizens to vote in a referendum. 
and yet we don't want them to talk about this other 1.7 million that we're dealing with. So yeah, um, I guess that's, that's it for right now. I'll let Larry speak first. Okay, go ahead, Larry. Um, when this referendum first showed up, it was one that gave total power to the people to show up to the ballot box and vote on any uh, uh, pay raise that would come to the council. And then it's, it backed up to what we're currently seeing here. Um, I was okay with leaving it up to the people and, uh, and having it as a referendum vote because I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's the ultimate in uh, letting the people decide what we're worth. Um, having said that, uh, I think this is a good compromise between, uh, you know, letting the council maintain some control and also giving the people a voice uh, at the following election to the time that anybody suggests that we get a pay raise or a pay decrease. Uh, I think the good thing about this is that as you draw closer to an election, anybody who's running or anybody who's running again uh, is going to have to take a position on this. And the voters are going to show up at the ballot box and they're going to know what your position is. And uh, I think that will be a reason for voters to turn out and, uh, and actually vote because uh, traditionally we have a pretty low voter turnout. So in that regard, I think this is good. I also think this cleans up the code. I think that's a good thing. Uh, and I don't think this, this binds us to, you know, although um, Councilman King was, was throwing out some suggestions of a pay raise, this doesn't tie us to any form of a pay raise. All this does is cleans up the code and gives the people an opportunity at that next election cycle to come in and say, either we saw what you did and we don't like it, or they're gonna come in and they're gonna say, we saw what you did and we think you either deserve it, you know, or, or deserve a decrease. So I'm actually okay with this ordinance. Somewhere down the road, somebody is gonna suggest a pay raise. I won't be okay with that. I ran for $4,000 a year and that's what I'm gonna take for the next four years, so, okay. Let me go Scott, he was up sure. for a while. Scott? Do you have a comment? No, you okay. go, you go. I got a response. <laughs> so, so I guess one, one response, Bob, back was that you throw out lots of budget items that we talk about, which, I mean, we deal with tons of stuff we have oh, yeah. to for all the essential services, you know, water and sewer, most important thing, been ground in my head. But I think the discriminator between those two that I'd like to point out is that we implement that that year. All the decisions we make are for immediate implementation. When we do a salary right now, it could be two or four years down the road, right? And we can vote it again. And we can turn around and say, hey, we changed our mind six months later and have another vote and say it's going down, it's going up, it's going down until the election happens. And that's how it's still written. So there's a, there's a fine line between voting on $1.7 million to take care of something and, as you said, $7,000. Because if $7,000 really isn't that big of a deal, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal to have it on here. The other well, comment one, I want to bring was one, to can I respond to that? Yeah, I mean, the other comment I want to bring was just to the fact that wanting people to come out and vote and saying that to have them come out and vote for this, you could either word it that hey they need to come out and vote for it whether they approve it or not, or they need to come out and vote for it because they don't approve it. It all depends on the verbiage. By default, it could go into effect that if they don't vote for it that and say no, then it goes into effect automatically. You could do it the other way where they have to vote for it to go into effect. It can work either way. So I just want to address those two points that you brought up. It, you, you, haven't really given, you haven't really given the citizens anything, okay? They already have the right to a referendum. A referendum as it's, as it's traditional is to, to well, the development annexation was a, perfect, was a perfect example where a group of people did not like the decision made by the Planning Commission and the Council, they have the, the authority as long as they follow some guidelines to come and do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not... So you're setting a higher level for the individuals like the Zeltman Annex where you ended up having to have 90% of the populace show up and sign off and say they don't like something versus now you're just saying, as election goes, we're not saying 90% of the people have to show up to vote you into office. It's whoever got the most votes. Likewise, we're saying whether it got the most votes between the yes or the no's. 
out of the total number of votes. That's how it works at the end of the day. So the way you're proposing is that by referendum, you're setting the bar a lot higher for people to and it squash to any salary change that you propose. We're setting the bar lower for an entry point that people can come in and they can make a decision, which is what they do every time they vote for us. They Pat, vote us in Pat, office, they vote the salary. Pat wants to get in here. Oh, I actually was not gonna speak on this and the beauty of having collected voices and differing views is that we learn from each other. Uh, I wasn't gonna speak, but I'm probably for the same reason Larry supports it, I do not support it. Because you're gonna take a $4,000 annual salary and turn it into a political football. There you go. That's exactly what it's gonna be when it hits the ballot. So for the same reason he likes it, is the reason, again, I was gonna remain silent, that I think it's gonna be made a political football. I wouldn't want it for that reason. The other I, reasons, I think it's good that it speeds it up. I think Scott's intent is great, that it can speed it up. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't give the people a voice. It actually just makes it a political football and the council's decision still stands. It just doesn't get speeded up. Thank you. Yeah, I will say I, 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 I understand very much what the mayor is looking at because that's my concern. My concern with this is this side of the table will decide to vote a pay raise when that side of the table is coming up for election. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or likewise, the current implementation. Well, no, well, but see, I'm, I'm just putting this, 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 this has three. Two. You guys never, have two. Never win well, that no, so this side of the table four. could actually make you sit on a ballot. We're for 2018. How do you? Or no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying, but, no, I'm saying this side of the bat, this side of the, the three people on this side of the table mm -hmm. can vote. decide to put a pay raise on your ballot, but not on our ballot. Um, and it, I can see what the mayor means to become. But the pay raise football. also is the mayor if the mayor decides, but he's only one. So he doesn't. He doesn't vote in this decision. He, he Scott, doesn't get five it. So you're right. It defaults back to just council. Right. And so the three of us could could basically say, "Hey, we want to cause those guys problems. We're going to throw you on a ballot with a pay raise." You um, could do that. I, I, I understand Without that. Without the ballot, you could just do a pay raise and put it into effect. Well, you put it, right. You put it into effect, but it's not yeah. sitting next to your name on the ballot. Um, I will say, I I liked the system that is in place currently, whereas the council votes a pay raise, but you don't get it. Yeah. Until you stood to, for election, exactly meaning right. the people have, have a, the people have to have a chance to say, "Hey, look, there's that your, that you, know, you voted that pay raise, and we don't like that. We're voting you out of office." Yes. Um, Instead of putting it on the ballot, I also had concerns also with the in this uh, with the council's uh, ability to reduce the mayor's pay. Um, it's we one can. thing for us to reduce our pay; it's another thing for us to decide that we want to reduce the mayor's pay. Yeah. Don't we do that um, anyways? That. <laughs> well. Peter, we do that anyways. We have I the think, right to increase. I think increase you can do that anyway. <laughs> I think they can. I but 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 I think it would probably have to stand for election. Yes. It was. Yeah. Now how it would work would be a little confusing. But I just I, I was know. I was concerned about too much. Uh, the the council having too much control over a mayor. But we do. But but the we, but we already the, have that for the for the budget and the salary for election. And in the mayor's case, he would only get that for election. Right, unless you pass this to say the change goes into effect or not, and it's in the way that this, instance, this table is set up, we have a weak mayor system. So don't no, call him weak. Have a strong mayor oh, system. strong mayor. Yeah. Strong mayor system. If we had a weak mayor. Sorry, system. sorry, sorry. The my my fault. The laws and, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. That's my fault. No, 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 no. It's fine. Yes, yeah, so I would say. I mean, strong I've mayor been, doesn't mean what you think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have been. I've you know personally been back, very much back and forth on this issue. <clears throat> um, I think if it were to, and I will tell you, if it were to come back giving the council the option of doing it either way. In other words, the council has the option of running things the way it did before. We just vote for it and you have to stand for election before you get it. Mm -hmm. Or if the council wanted to speed it up, they could vote to put it on the ballot for a referendum so that everybody gets it right away. That I, w I think I would support. Um, so you want to just put an, an that's or what this in does, there? Yeah. No, this isn't what that does. He's no. asking for an it or. Does right now I want an or. Right now it's an and. Right now it's oh, no, I know. I know. But yeah. so, an right, and. yes, that's correct. Right now it's an and. I, if, it were, if, if we had an or. Yeah, you're saying, I, you're saying put an or in that if the council votes for a raise and says, or. and we vote that we want to put it on the ballot. Well, we would vote to put it on the ballot so that we would all get it right away. Folks, it's already going to be on the ballot. That's what you don't understand. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Let's be clear. The individuals by who by virtue of the individual, by virtue of, by virtue of people voting for you, it's on the ballot. Yeah, but you don't benefit. Concern, people say, I don't like that guy because he voted himself a two hundred dollar a year raise. But the the individuals who voted, unless you are up for re-election and you have to re-earn that seat, 
right. you don't benefit from it. Right. The individuals that aren't up for election don't benefit and from don't, any change you make. I don't have an issue with that. Okay, the way that it, the way that it is now is very traditional, and everybody understands it. Okay, you don't get the raise so you stand for re-election. Okay, that's. Yeah, I think Peter's. I think throwing the or, so you have the option to do what Scott is suggesting. If you want, to. if you want to get it but right it's away, not automatically on the ballot to make it a political football. But if there's reason, like for instance, you all missed the cycle. The intent was put in the budget for raises. You all didn't do it in time. I th we I lost we, the you're opportunity. You're right. We did. So I think that's what Scott tried to do. Although I don't agree with this for other reasons, I think that was Scott's intent to fix that, and it was a good intent. Uh, no, I, I understand the intent, and I think where he's got his pen up. Yeah, uh, Peter's or is acceptable yeah, to I like, me. I like his or. I'm okay with his or. I do, I do think it's important to clean up the uh, town code. Which, that's the other yeah, part of this that. is it cleans yeah. it up. So let's yeah, divorce the two. See how Does everybody agree code, okay. with the clean up right, portion of it? Does like it clean up under time? I don't know. It does. I'm it, not it, sure it what you mean by, by clean up. It cleans it up in the sense that currently our charter specifies the salary yep. by dollar number. 500 bucks, Pat. And therefore, every time you make a change in pay, you not only have to pass an ordinance, but you have to pass a charter amendment. So we wouldn't have to pass a charter amendment. So to clean amendment. it up, right. that's it's correct. You make it easier. Okay. The, so that's, that's the, the charter will say that, that the pay will be set by ordinance. And yeah. your ordinance so that's, is what that's, changed. That's right. Up. And, and, that's, I, and that's I get no problem with that. So okay. does everybody agree on agree the charter ordinance fixing that portion of it? We'll break it into items. Does everybody agree with that? All right, so explain the charter amendment then. Charter so, amendments do tend to be. No, I get, I get the charter. What, the what charter you are asking, can you just blatantly so, so just to say? Clear, simple terms. Blatantly is that the charter amendment right now, if you take the two items out of it, the charter amendment says we're going to end up putting it into an ordinance now. It's not going to be written in a charter amendment anymore. Can I take a step? Right now you have to do an ordinance and a charter amendment. Correct. The way, the way it's going to be rewritten, it'll just be by ordinance. Is that correct? You take away one step. Tom, right now you need an ordinance and a charter amendment. With Scott's proposal, you take away the charter. You only have to do an ordinance. Or to put another way, do you like what is proposed under section C2-3A. It says each councilman shall receive compensation of an annual salary in an amount set by ordinance passed in the regular course by the town council. And basically what that does is it, it pulls it out of the ordinance, which is like amending our constitution. Pulls it out requires, of the Right, right, right. It, I'm sorry, pulls it out of the charter, which is like amending our constitution. Um, I don't have any problem pulling it out of the charter, but I also don't. So what that would do is instead of by ordinance or by charter and ordinance, okay, <coughs> just ordinance. You have to. It'll be just ordinance. Just but ordinance. We're not. We're not agreeing to. We're not agreeing to change any of those other things. Okay. We would still have the right. same. Right. So, seating. so to be clear, like we're just saying, it's only we're only talking about agreeing on that one part for the moment. Does everybody agree with that change? It's not in front of you. You got, I mean, it is as a whole, but that one piece, we divorce charter. So we don't have to create ordinance. a new charter amendment every single time we Correct. just make an ordinance. Yes. I agree with yes. that. Yes. Okay, that, well, I can, I can so, deal with so that. So that part, at least I, one, you got. Okay, the other part is what we're talking about now with the compensation and how it does. His I or think, fixes it. I think that Peter's or, I mean, right. I'm but fine you if you want to put the or hold in there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. have to choose. Go ahead. I'm fine with instead of an and that you have to do it all inclusive it has to be this way everything has to be on the ballot that if the council decides as peter said and or either you let it go the way it does and you pass the vote and everybody has to sit in their seat for however many years until re-election or the council has the ability to turn around and say put it on the public ballot and let them have a voice is that in the charter or is that in an ordinance that is in the Ordinance, I believe, it would be in an is ordinance. the wording. No, is it in this charter in or either, in this in ordinance? ordinance? It's in They're neither both both currently. Neither it, currently. Right okay. now, it's that changing the ordinance that is in front of you, which was the and. You probably also have changed the charter, too, because in, in the first instance, because they're only our charter does not provide a blanket right of referendum. It, it uh, only in certain circumstances does our charter recognize a right of referendum, recognizes it for annexations, certain bond issuances. Of course, charter amendments themselves may be with petition subject to referendum. But to create 
the right of referendum on an ordinance change for compensation, you would need to, as an initial matter, change the charter to authorize the council with that power. Okay. So, which would be easy to do, but right. Oh, we've already got the charter in front of us, so we're talking about changes to both. So right. it's still under consideration. So right. we'd have to change the charter to allow that to be done, as a matter of procedure or formality. Correct. Okay. So if we make that type of change, I think I ended up hearing Larry's fine with it, and Peter's fine with it, and I'm the one that proposed it. So if we can reword it that way, Tom, where it's all dot the I's crossing the T's, I'm fine with it too. It still allows the public that if we decide yes, it should be on the ballot, the public gets a voice. If we want to accept, I mean, my perspective and if is they what don't, we would do then is if, if we want to accelerate the pay raises, mm -hmm. then we would have to put it on for you know for an, yes. a, a otherwise referendum. it just rides. If we just want to let it ride as it is now, we have that option. That's fine. I'm okay. fine with that. that would make sure that's what it says. Well, when we get it, that's yeah. not He's what this going says. To They're going to have to. It's going to have to be redrafted. Right. So you'll have to redraft it and put it in front of us, but. Is that, what do you want to withdraw and, and I, do I that? I will withdraw so that Tom can reword the charter and the ordinance as such. <clears throat> okay. Are you good with that, Tom? Okay. Thank you. I think he has some idea of what we want. Now, will we have to go through the whole formality of reintroducing and Yeah, I think we should. That's fine. Yeah. We should. We have time. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's not, no rush. We're not any rush, so. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Okay, so we've withdrawn 17-2 charter amendment and 17-20. Um, to be brought back for to intro. Be brought back. Okay, up next. 2017-15, this is to amend and clarify the town code regarding outside dining in the downtown area of the DTZ. This is here for adoption. This is the one we had the public hearing on. Um, Scott, once again, this is yours, so I'll let you. Yeah, so I'd like to move uh, for consideration uh, ordinance 2017-15. Do you want to propose it in your red, in your yellow, in your blue line format, or the the, or as introduced back on the 11th? I want to move it in the blue line in the format blue line. with okay. the changes, which falls in line with what planning and zoning. Okay, I will. I will second that. Does that include the change to the to the times? Yeah, they wanted. They wanted. They wanted ten o'clock. They didn't want eleven. Well, I'm talking about the blue. On the sign. Yes. Yeah. On the sign. So if you introduce it. For the thirty-six point versus thirty-six inch. Well, that that one too. Yeah. That one too. That one's got to be done. So. C. C. Uh, small room numeral three. Yeah. Instead of after 9 p.m., I should say 10 p.m. Which is what it says right now in the blue mm -hmm. copy. It says 9 and 10, but you're saying uh, 10, 11. Say 10, 11. Right. Yep. right? To be consistent. Indicated? Right. To be consistent. consistent. Where are we? C3, page two, page three. Four, C3. Right there. Right. Consistent, you would want the same change <coughs> to uh, 112.62, F27, F3C, yeah. right? Correct. That'd be 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and then also um, it says 36. Uh, it's three. Inch font. Three <laughs> on that. 36 point, point font. font. Yeah, it should yeah. on 112. That's exactly how big a 36 inch font would F3. be. F3. Three feet. And uh, I think the other one was the uh, C under uh, 112. 37.1 B D C. D4 C. Yes, so those changes. So the points and the two times to be consistent. So that's how Scott's moving it. Do we have a second? I'm not seeing any seconds. Okay. Uh, so lacking a second, um, the, the ordinance would fail to pass. Okay. Uh, since I'm the new guy, I get to ask all the questions. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the reason I didn't second it and wouldn't second it is because I believe that that, you know, that 9 p.m. should take place during the entire week. 
In uh, other words, there shouldn't be Friday, Saturday hours. It should, end of service should be at 9 p.m. Well, just so, from a technical perspective, yeah. if, to, to discuss, you second, second yeah, it doesn't discuss. mean you support it. It means you want to discuss it. Okay. Well, then I'll just let it lie. Okay. You That's just, because a lot of times you'll notice I will <laughs> second things, even though I'm not going to vote for them. It's just because I really want to discuss that item. So, um, so the implication of not passing it is what? We you stick with the current ordinance? We're stuck with the current ordinance. It means that there's no changes if we don't discuss it. Okay. So at least discussion, we can change things and say, well, how right. about this? How about Come that? back next month with new changes. Now it's done. Now it's now done. It's done. Well, there's it nothing. can't come back with yeah. changes. No, I was, I was well, just can, explaining uh, the You layer. can always yeah. reintroduce it with, with you changes. Can. Yeah. But, I mean, if the council's not of the opinion of trying to, you know, entertain this and assist businesses for the future that's fine so the council can't discuss but can i say a few words regarding nope enforcement no. oh enforcement yes you can yes that's your house <laughs> that's okay uh i won't get into the hours it's friday and saturday as you see them being a little different i did say some improvements in here from an enforcement perspective that i did like nothing's going to change now but I think it's gotten a lot better, so I'm happy to see that. I know we have owners up there that are willing to work with us. And while you know some may view this ordinance as giving more uh, to businesses, uh, it, it did in an hour perspective, but also gave some language that did help me enforce. Uh, we'll continue to look at it, and uh, I didn't look at it this closely. I didn't think it would die. But uh, there's some enforcement issues. I may come back. You may, yeah, come back with I may some come proposals. Back with you for some enforcement help because there was some enforcement help I had in here hidden, and now I don't have it. Nope. <laughs> and so we still off. have the problems with so, enforcement. So, so I'll, I'll talk to you about So that. yeah, yeah, come oh, back with some enforcement. Change, but I need some enforcement help. And, and one thing, the only reason that I'm not seconding is simply because John has asked us not to. He doesn't want this passed. I think we can we can discuss some of the shortcomings in it and, and maybe come up with some stuff. Okay. I'll let you bring it we, forward. We need to we need to have something that'll make those uh, protect the citizens and allow yeah, the mayor yeah. to enforce. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that I think that's that's, that's, that's your that's department, down. Bob. Your your planning. So. All right. All right. Ordinance 2017-17, a budget amendment to move five thousand uh, dollars. Uh, ADA swing to rails to trails. Larry, this is yours. You want to move it? Uh, yeah, I'd like to move it in. I will second that. Is there any discussion on the topic? Not in honor of that. No. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Looked unanimous. 2017-18, budget amendment adding the grant received for the farmer's market. This is here for adoption. Um, I guess farmer's market would fall under... EDC maybe? Um, I would think, but actually we haven't. They've they've been um, kind of on their own as a uh, as an. Entity. Well, do you want to move it, Bob? Because yeah, I, I, <laughs> I will. I will. I will move it or second whatever it needs. I will. I will. I will second it. Bob's moving it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. 2017-19. Uh, Budget amendment for the downtown master plan consultant. Um, I will, uh, but Bob, that's really kind of your department yeah, again. I'll, I'll move it once again. And I, I will second it. A um, couple, couple things to say. We knew at budget time last year that this item was going to be much more expensive than the $35,000, I think, that we, we put in the budget for it. Um, we had no idea what it was going to cost. This is, this is the projected number that's that'll that'll bring it across um i don't think we knew it was going to be a whole lot higher we were probably talking about <laughs> I, I can i remember us discussing it that we were putting thirty five thousand dollars in as a placeholder it was as a placeholder no. and then yeah. we we just really didn't know what we, the we didn't know what it would be no and i think when we drafted the rfp it this we broadened the scope a little right. bit so yeah. that added to the cost for sure well things <laughs> things went on it like the flat iron building mm -hmm. and uh, and um Barney, what was your parking thing called? The uh, phase one. Phase one and, and all, all of that stuff. It just got added on there and it kept growing and growing. So, you know. It is what it is. It, it yeah. just is what it is. It's, it's about 135000 ought to cover the entire thing. And that's the public meetings, too, and that kind of stuff. Yes. And several of the bids are that right. high. So that does lead you to believe that right. is the actual cost. And, 
Right. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had we had ten proposals and we eliminated five of them right away. And I'd say the remaining five, we interviewed four companies. They were all over a hundred thousand right. dollars. But again, this is our downtown. You don't want to screw it up. You want to get it right. You have things riding on this, like housing the police, our road patterns, flat iron. There's so many parking. big items. Parking, center street going through. The There's marketing so, study. The marketing, st mar marketing, marketing study, study, whatever, pile it on. Yeah. But there's some, and Bill point, pointed that out. There's so many things that this study is addressing. It's really worth the uh, extra. And we have a staff member, <laughs> defecto. Bill Butts, Planning Commission. When and Bill, just to clarify, because you're on planning, that's why yeah, we're bringing you up at this reason. point because this is your this is your department. You. Right. We spent the better part of four years, all the commissions working together, coordinated by planning, to update our town master plan. Okay, and we all felt that it it was a step in the right direction. We said this was the fifth master plan that. Mount Airy had done. We wanted to be sure it didn't sit on a shelf. We wanted to outline a vision that made sense carrying the town forward. And the very first thing that we saw, well, there were two things. We saw that we needed to finish a couple of brand new zoning districts, an, an OPE and a mixed use zone. And we saw the need after decades of a downtown revitalization an economic development plan. We knew that we had been <clears throat> topographically challenged in our downtown area. We knew we did not have a critical mass of retail. Okay, that's tremendously challenging when you've got a bypass that's pulling away critical traffic all the time. Okay, we don't have any background in this. When we started to talk with other communities, when we started to find out how they had addressed these same things, we saw you bring in expertise <coughs> and specialization that has done this for, for other municipalities. Not so much in a Montgomery County. That's not our scope and scale. So we designed an RFP. And if you haven't read it, you need to go back and really look at how comprehensive and well done this RFP is. Town staff, Monica, Heather, Barney, they did a tremendous job of framing the essential components of this. It's really, really well done. You had over 80 expressions of interest in this. You had 10 very, very solid proposals. They boiled it down to two finalists, either of which could do this. These folks have done the downtown Frederick revitalization plan and the Golden Mile plan in Frederick. They've done work for Ellicott City. They've done work in Hagerstown. They've done work in for the downtown Elkton master plan, the Perryville downtown master plan. They've done work for Westminster. They've done work for Columbia. They've done work for Leesburg, Virginia, and in other regions around the country. But we were interested in scope and scale that conform to what we needed to do, okay? This is of critical importance to Mount Airy going forward. It is really, really important Thank, that thanks, we Bill. get this right. Any Thank dis you, discussion at the table? Uh, Bob? Uh, well, you know, one other thing, we have a tendency, and the, the reason we had to go out for somebody, we, we have a tendency to vote with our hearts because this is home, this is our downtown, and it's, it's very difficult to make decisions about you know landmarks down here that we may not be retaining um, so it's we actually went out looking for somebody professional and then so many things just kept getting added to this we weren't when we were passing when we were working on the um, the mixed-use zoning we weren't we weren't thinking that this was something that was going to end up on the downtown master plan so we get to that other budget or that other um, item on the agenda of the downtown master plan and we'd start talking about that well the two fit together and I think that's what Phil was, Phil was saying everything that we're talking about and a lot of things that the commissions are working on together that we realized when we had the commissions meeting in August September you know the, the the chairs from the commissions all of a sudden we realized how many things we were we were all working on together so that that's kind of why it grew Okay.
Thanks. Any, any? Well, Larry? I'll, I'll just add one thing. That, oh, you know, we didn't want to make any huge investments in infrastructure or road changes be yeah. without this plan in place. It just didn't make sense. Larry? Yeah, I, I suspect everybody who sits at this table eventually <laughs> is sitting here saying we're at this pivotal moment. Uh, and, and I guess I'm the one tonight. We're at this pivotal moment where we're trying to figure out how to get Center Street through. We're trying to figure out what to do with the Flatiron Building. We're investing, uh, I think we're up to about $750,000 into a train station that's going to become our fabulous museum, but we really don't understand the impact that that's going to bring into town. I've had numerous people, uh, certainly during the campaign, who came up to me and talked about the fact that we just need a planner, somebody who is able to come in here and tell us guide us on, on what needs to be done. Um, so in lieu of hiring a planner, I think that um, although it's a hard pill to swallow this much money, I, I think this is better than hiring a planner. And I think we do need to know from someone with expertise, from a, a group with expertise, you know, exactly what we need to do to make sure that, that downtown stays you know, it it's, keeps its historic character without dying, and that Center Street goes through, and that mixed-use zoning is done properly with the, with the proper ratios of uh, commercial and uh, residential development. So, like I said, it's a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, I think it's, uh, it's important that, speaking for myself, that I'm going to support it. So. Well stated. Well stated. Yeah. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? No, unanimous, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, uh, ordinance 2017-21, a budget amendment to add landlord contribution to the police station fit out. That is here for introduction. I will introduce any second. Looks like Jason seconding. That'll be on for next month. Ordinance 2017 And if we could, just that's money we're getting in. Yes, we, we don't have a problem with getting so I don't, I don't think you're all going to vote against <laughs> it. <laughs> no, we don't want that money. Um, ordinance 2017-22, budget amendment adding $50,000 to the well exploration and development line item for 17-18. Put this on as an emergency. What happened is, well, I, I will move it um, so we discuss it. I have a second from Jason. Okay. Um, just, just to explain what it is. No. Oh, okay. We, uh, we budgeted money last year to do this well exploration. We didn't actually start the project until this year, which, which unfortunately sometimes happens because we've been pushing Harrison and Sheriff for what, a decade now? We finally started actually doing the work. Um, so that's in this year. Um, un just got lost track of things. And the reason it's on here as an emergency is because one of the bills was due like in October and we can't pay it and another one of the bills will be due before our next meeting and we haven't paid this company that's out there doing the work which is why it's on here as an emergency and Larry uh, we actually had this discussion once again during the budget process last year um, and said well we're not gonna we're not gonna go ahead and put the fifty thousand dollars in there now because we we didn't spend it last year we may not spend it next year either so we, I think we sort of agreed that we would, we would put this in as an amendment to the budget should we need to, you well, know. When we actually go out there and we, have we, these guys start doing work. We, we, you know, we didn't want to spend $50,000 that we really weren't spending. And yeah. so, God, you know, I, re I remember that. So as much as it hurts me, I'm going to support this as an emergency measure. And, uh, I actually said, Bob, I said, you know, I think we could even get Bob to go along with this because Bob understands somebody who's doing work right. who needs to be paid. Well, yeah, and it, it gets more expensive when you don't pay. Yeah. Yeah, and, there, and, and like I said, invoices are already coming overdue because right. we didn't have the money and we had to get out there and get the drilling done. So any other discussion on this? I, I moved it as an emergency measure. It has been second. It would require four of us to pass it as an emergency measure. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Was unanimous. So that's our four. So Barney, or, or I guess we tell them, or whoever, you pay these people now. Uh, resolution 2017-7, healthy eating and active living. Jason. Yes. Um, move it. So Tom, do I need to move it in? Yes. OK, I'll move it in. And I will second. Um, Jason, so gentlemen, as you got your uh, paperwork, there is a revised version on your table this evening. Um, it just corrected a few. Uh, edits as far as grammar and punctuation goes 
but um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, um, looking out for the best interests of the town. And as we start to take a look at our downtown master plan, making sure that the residents um, of Mount Airy, uh, that we're looking out for them. Um, a lot of the things on here we're already doing. And as we learn through MML, our summer conferences, um, that this is being more and more promoted uh, through not, throughout the municipalities. Um, and so I, that's all I have to say about that. Jesse, Charlene's smiling back there because I will say I walked by her office the other day mm -hmm. and she read this and she was absolutely thrilled. <laughs> she was like, this is so great. So I just want to, and so we got to, I just look, she's kind of smiling back there. So. <laughs> Any, uh, Larry? Yeah, I, I just want you to know I'm, I'm certainly for this. I just want, to, want the citizens to know that um, it comes with a, I think three groups is what I counted up in here, and I just want to make sure everybody knows that uh, there was a call in here to make a living community policy council, mm -hmm. a food policy council, and a workplace wellness committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, probably going to be a call for some volunteers. Out Absolutely. There or whatever. Yep. So, uh, uh, but it's, uh, uh, there's a lot of good verbiage in here. I, I like it. So uh, good job. Thank you. Pat? Just some comments along these same lines. I'm very excited to see this. I'm very excited to see the young councilman bringing forward this incentive. Uh, as you know, we're getting more and more 5Ks in town. We're getting equipment stations in Watkins once we meet with parks and find out where to put them. Uh, we have a stretching station which just put in there. And something that people may not know, uh, in the pharma business, uh, Abbott just uh, received FDA approval for a device, I see diabetes, that can actually read your diabetes level, your glucose levels without pricking. Well, there's another device that was developed right here in Mount Airy by scientists in Mount Airy that's already got approval in Europe that we're looking to get approval here, and it's, it's by a different company, but it's actually probably superior than this FDA, so it's really going to be groundbreaking for diabetes research. That was all founded right here in Mount Airy. So that's going to be coming out more and more in the news. So we really are becoming a healthy town, and this is just a great incentive. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Looked unanimous. All right. I don't believe you have any unfinished business or any new business. And Debbie, weren't we going to pull those two off the agenda? No, we, we keep them there. Not to leave them have, have open-ended things? No, I mean, OK, well, we'll talk about it. We started to keep <laughs> them there. Great job. Cleaning, cleaning up from the cloud. Um, Great yep. job. Okay, on to the reports. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Council President Mayor Peter Hell because the class that we recently held to help us run more effective meetings, and it's really so we can serve the public better and take some of the noise out of our meetings. Uh, I'd like to see it implemented across all our commissions. We all struggle. I struggle. I'm a layman. None of us are professional politicians. I always like to say professional politicians sit on boards. They get huge retirements. They get huge salaries. They get benefits from their positions. We don't get any of that. Okay, so we're just, we're all volunteers basically too, and we don't always know the exactly right things to do. And Peter, I can see that he's already implementing some of the uh, nuggets from our class. And thanks for bringing the guy in. You're yes, the guy who brought the guy in. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It was from MML, our experience in MML. Uh, to echo Roxanne, I have put that in my marriage report about Reflect Cozy. It's not just walking your dog. It's the joggers that are out there early in the morning, the joggers with me in the evenings. We all have to wear uh, reflective gear. I try to set a good example, so thank you for... Uh, for bringing that up. Uh, uh, Barney, uh, we had an issue over at the railway yard and it's it's notable. Uh, we had some uh, graffiti we had to clean up. Well, after me and Barney looked at it, we realized that graffiti was from the Runkles, the Moxleys, the Simpsons, uh, names that have been in this town for years. And there was even a comment that uh, Spoyer is a fool. Well, <laughs> just for, and Barney said, but that's definitely got to come down. And that's where I disagreed. I said, definitely had to say, Spoyer was the mayor in this town from 1946 to 1952. <laughs> Somebody wrote that on the wall. So uh, we've, we've, we've decided to save that for our historic building. That graffiti will remain. It's priceless. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Doc O'Brien for coming over and lending his expertise and advice to how we can preserve these things. And, and also, where we do have to cover some graffiti, Barney came up with this canvas-like painting where we can take a picture of it, maintain it underneath, and show people what's underneath there. But the inside hall, 
will retain the Sporier as a full. Now, if it was Rockenberg as a full, we may have wanted to edit that a little bit. But it's just some great history that we were able to uh, maintain. And uh, as the public sees us going through a lot of these increases with buying the railway station, starting the police force and doing this, uh, we just got through our, our audit and our, uh, our, our letter that went out to the town council. Our reserves have actually went up. Our overall reserves have increased once again. So that's accredited to, although we seem to budget, we seem to spend, we also save wherever we can. And uh, so I'd like to thank the staff for really taking the lead role in that and this council for doing that because I think, I think we all expected a dip. I certainly did. Uh, you don't have those expenditures out of dip, but for some reason we, our budget overall reserves went up. So all good news. Uh, that's it. Thank you all very much. Oh, one last thing to note. Uh, it's not really a council vote, so we didn't have it on the, the table. Uh, but there was an issue with health unlimited parking every year for the past, whatever, let's say 10, 15 decades. We've just went out there and covered those signs. Uh, that community has grown a lot more. Uh, and they approached streets and roads. Scott gave me that feedback. Uh, and then there was some citizen uproar over there about the double-sided parking. I know Councilman Larry got involved. We went out there and did some research. Uh, I know the streets and roads wants to continue the research, but we had to do something right away. So once I was asked, I went out there and talked to the people, and I talked to the business owners. I talked with Councilman Scott. Larry was out there. And uh, I told each one of you offline to ask what your opinion was. Although it does not require a council vote, I did not want to do it without a consensus of the council. Uh, we agreed not to continue the practice of allowing the double-sided parking. However, as a compromise, we agreed to move the parking down further down the road to make it one-sided only. Now, what that'll do is, there's a lot of times where we can see the Health Unlimited is using the parking more for convenience. Certainly throughout the year, they're using it for convenience. Well, this puts it further down the road, and I don't think anybody's going to be using it for convenience anymore. And this will give us an opportunity to really watch it during the winter season, because while I know, I think the anecdotal ev evidence is that they, they use it for convenience, I'd really like to see it. And this puts the parking down the street, so it, it helps the business at their balloon time, protects the citizens from double-sided parking. I think it's a win-win, so thank you for your input. See, Scott has a question. So. You wanna Mr. Mayor, you ended up saying that you took council consensus for yes. this item. Yes. And you basically got favorable by everybody. Three. At least okay. three. Did you take into consideration um, the available parking that Health Unlimited already has available to or the available parking they already have for them, not only in their lot on the street parking that we've given them, and they also have the lot over at Century Ford, which Century Ford told them they can park in their overflow lot. Mm, I have no knowledge of Century Ford saying yeah. that. So, Century well, well, hold on, hold on. For a while. If you're grilling me, slow down. Uh, I, I, I talked to the owners, or Mike Kelly, representative of Century Ford. He mentioned nothing about that. So, if you have proof of that, bring that I forward. I do. Okay. I've okay. got a whole packet here that I'd okay. love to okay. share with you. Okay. You guys can look at that. Yeah, we can do it. It's, it's, not, it's not a debatable mm -hmm. item, it's something that I'm going to release the restrictions. So, uh, as, you, I, as you know, I'll be driving by there twice every day. Good. And, and I, I expect to be reporting to you. I support you on this sort of. So, yeah. so sort the, of. the question I have with releasing the restrictions is that you're bagging signs where, and you said you're going to extend parking all the way down, which I believe is a change in how that road is parking on a collector road, and there's certain rules and regulations that need to be followed as such. So again, I'm, I just want to know. Again, I'm not, you, I'm not debating. It's, it's, it's not a debate. I, I'm just yeah, asking what is your intent for releasing restrictions on the road? I don't give me your your questions aren't clear on that. Just give me a straight question. Where are you proposing to release restrictions so that Health Unlimited can park on, all down one side of I'm the road? I'm surprised to hear you say that because I sent you out a map. Do you mean how far down? Yeah, highlighting where we were going. Right. So they already own one of the areas that you highlighted which they already parked there, there's no parking. Mm -hmm. There's another area that's down in a collector road that is in conflict, which I already pointed out to you for 112-92. So I'm trying to figure out if there's any other additional areas besides the right. ones Again, that you Again, I get very confused when I hear you talk, so let me just try to go back. I highlighted a road that I, they Maybe already you guys own. ought to take this offline. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Because this is a mayor's trying. report. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah. I just felt it dealt with streets and roads, and I heard streets and roads mentioned. Yeah, so. it, it, yeah. <laughs> Well, did you yeah, want the, the, the map was sent out to everybody, and they don't own any of the roads. It's public parking along a road that we've allowed for decades. We're just moving it down further. It's a simple adjustment. It doesn't give them what they wanted. Uh, Larry, you were out there. You walked the streets, and it's a great compromise. 
Well, I, you know, I, I looked at the map, and like I say, I drive there twice every day. Yeah. It's not going to block my getting out right. from, you know, Backacre Circle. So, you know, <clears throat> but I, if, if we run into stuff, I'll let you know. Oh, that's right. You work over there now. Yes, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. working post, there now. Post haste, I will let you well, know. What's we going really on. should evaluate over, over the winter season. Yeah, but let's gyms, see what happens. But gyms do balloon right. around January and February. They always do. And I've never personally watched them to make sure. And then everybody gives up around March. Uh, and there's no sense to pave unless you really have to. But going forward, and I will agree with Councilman Scott that once the collector road does go through, no parking should be allowed on that road. Right, right now, it's a dead end. There's right. no reason not to help the guy on a dead end road. It just doesn't make sense. I think, to. Larry, do you have a question? I, I think I'll just step back and okay. let this be handled offline. Yeah, boy, this, they, you guys give up in March? Man, that's when I get my bike out and start riding. Did, did you <laughs> want to do anything on that? or If you want. I don't, no, it doesn't matter to me. I just yeah, we're sure. still okay. working on that. All right, okay. Still working on uh, that. Beautification, parks and rec. Larry. All right. Um, Beautification side, uh, they've been busy out there. They're always busy and working hard. Uh, they decorated the train station along with the help of other volunteers out oh, here. The I caboose. I forgot them too. Wildwood Park and Vest Pocket well, Park have all been decorated by them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Larry. Okay, the uh, <laughs> uh, flat iron uh, ornament. Um, is uh, still available here in Town Hall. They're uh, $20 a piece, and I think there's right around 100 of them left. So, uh, so they're I'm moving along. Them. Yep. Uh, the uh, LDS Elders, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, are still helping on Rails to Trails every Tuesday, so I wanted to uh, thank them. They'll be up there tomorrow. As long as you bring pizza, they just keep coming, so it's great. <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Davy Trees. They came out and helped us uh, uh, decorate the tree in the municipal lot because we can reach the, uh, the upper branches. So we appreciate them coming out. The next beautification meeting is January 16th of 2018. Uh, Parks and Rec, uh, turkey trot occurred. We had between 100 and uh, somewhere around 200. How many? 212. We'll up that number to 212 people came out to... Uh, uh, to the golf course and um, uh, participating in that. Uh, expect in January we're going to be bringing a budget amendment for uh, basically we, we hadn't done a 5K like that, so we're going to have to figure out a way to pay for the T-shirts and everything. It'll be a net zero to us, and then Mount Airy Net will get the proceeds from that event, which is what was planned all along. Uh, the t-shirts are in is that correct Sean and by the way you did a great job appreciate the work that you did out there t-shirts are in town hall uh, for anybody out there who's listening who participated and wants to get their uh, they have to bring in their certificate it's up to Sean they were sent an email with all of the information so they have it okay all right uh, the uh, mayor mentioned quickly the uh, stretching station that was built by uh, Anthony uh, Falletta is uh, up and running out at uh, Watkins Park. So as you leave the parking lot and head up the Wilson Trail, you'll see the uh, stretching station. It seems to be staying dry, and I've seen a couple of people using it so far. Um, let's see, the other uh, budget amendment coming in January is uh, Barney's been out there actively working on Townview and their stormwater management issues, and uh, so it required uh, some engineering to be done. Uh, so in January, I'll be talking about that as well. Uh, they seem to have come up with a good plan. Is it past the county yet or no? No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. I think it's at the county right now. Okay. All right. Uh, the Santa and the Caboose event went well. We saw a little bit over um, probably about 100 families uh, come out. And I uh, want to say thank you to Santa Claus uh, for that event because uh, he, he showed up for free. And he's recently had uh, some surgery done, so uh, he was moving slow, but he got it done for us, and we thank him. Also, there was a Girl Scout troop. I'd like to say thank you to them. I don't have their number with me. Uh, Delegate Kathy Azali showed up as well and uh, helped uh, get kids in and out of the caboose. And the Rotary Club, of which Paul's here, Paul Burkett, uh, stood out there and passed out hot chocolate to uh, all the kids as they left the caboose. So uh, that was that, that was a great event. So thank you to the Rotary Club as well. Uh, there's a very merry Mount Airy Christmas event on December 9th. Uh, starts about 6 p.m. Sean's been working on that too. Uh, it'll basically be a night of arts 
activities around the uh, caboose area in that parking lot. It starts about 6 p.m. on December 9th. And uh, Heather's helping to put together a kickoff meeting for uh, Sabra Wang and the uh, Transportation Alternative Program grant. And, uh, and we're trying to get that underway before the end of the year. Okay, uh, Twin Arch Basketball that I brought up last month will come back again in January. Uh, we're, uh, we want to make sure that we have all our T's crossed, I's dotted concerning uh, any advertising that needed to be done as well as uh, uh, simplifying the, uh, uh, the bid for the basketball court. So that'll be back in January. Next uh, Parks and Rec meeting, January 18th, 2018. Thank you. All right, and we need to go back to the mayor for one second. Oh, yes. We have some uh, commission appointments and reappointments. We uh, would like to appoint Lindy Brown to beautification and reappoint Michael Dixon to sanitation and recycling. And just as a reminder, Michael Dixon, Michael Dixon donated the labor to install our uh, car charging station that literally put us on the map. I, I will move we accept the mayor's recommendations. It looks like Jason is seconding in the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Looked unanimous. Okay. Now we'll move on to EDC planning. Okay. Um, I was kind of let a little guy out of the out of the box here earlier with the Boy Scouts. Miscellaneous Distillery is is discussing with Rob Scranton about buying the, the bank building and um, seeing what they can what they can do there. Um, right now, he I think he said his his production is 112 barrels a month by. Um, 112 barrels a month. By the time, I think it's eight, eight months from now, he expects to be up to 8,000 barrels, and he's got to find some place to store this stuff. Some of it has to be in those in those kegs for eight, no, four years. So he's he's looking and he's looking at that. Um, so there's he would like to discuss um, natural gas. The electric, the electric product or the electric equipment that he can buy is not as efficient. It's much more expensive. Sorry, I was leaning back. Yeah, I don't think there's any gas over there. The closest gas gets, I think, is the they brought it in special to run it to the um, the firehouse. How close are we, Barney? Correct, right, right there on Park Avenue. Yeah. At the upper driveway. Right. Yeah, that was that's then that was specifically brought there when they converted that to restaurant space. Right. Well, wow, he's, you know, so I guess there'll be a discussion. You know, I know we have it, there's, we need to discuss. I know we have it in Summit Ridge, so we may be able to come through the back and not yeah, tear up. We may be able to come up through the back. Years ago, the they, they offered it to Village Gate, and Village Gate, not enough people accepted it, but tw um, Twin Ridge took it. I never so got offered it in my neighborhood. I'd take it. I brought a <clears> propane <throat> tank in. Um, Interesting. We have it. But he's, he's really looking at being in there in a year and a half. Um, I, tried to tell great. him that we would help in any way that we could because if he doesn't get Can he his partner with Jason and do solar power? <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't, uh, he's, natural gas is what he's looking for, the cheapest and the cleanest. I know. Um, he's got to create a lot of heat, yeah. Yeah. And at the, he can get all kinds of equipment that runs on natural gas, and he's very limited in the equipment that runs on electric. So um, his goal is to be in there in a year and a half. He's going to be somewhere in a year and a half. If we don't do what it takes to hold him here, you know, he, he might be someplace out of town. So that's something, that's something that's going to be in EDC's headlights. There's been a lot of questions. Are we going to have public restrooms at the train station? Are there going to be public restrooms that could be opened up on the weekends and stuff? Is that something that anybody's even thought of? What we always try to open up town hall whenever right. we can and one of the improvements I think we can do Although we did have the front door open during the Santa parade and I propped it We need to have some signage to let people know they can come in and use restrooms Right, and then we have to arrange for cleaning the next day To have the custodial staff come in and do some cleaning so the town staff who also shares a restroom uh, I don't know physically over in the uh, Barney I know they put the one bathroom in so the pharmacy can use it but at the train station, is there another restroom? And I should know this, so I just can't. There's two single restrooms. One, one was meant to be men's, one women's in, in the end. Right now, the pharmacy is using one of them that they temporarily put in. Um, not saying that you couldn't yeah. open it up. I saw Eric with a hand up. I think it's a good idea. I, yeah. didn't, I, I, 
I, I didn't know how to answer the question, but um, that, that's something people look at. It's not a bad idea. Uh, it's um, a great idea, and when we, whenever we can get the most use out of town facilities, we will. Yeah. When I, you know, when I ride the rail trails through all these towns, and I ride a lot of them, and I stop at a lot of these little stations like this, um, if the stations are open, and I'm assuming we're going to have it, op we want to have it open on weekends as a museum, which is very right. typical. It's always a place where you can stop and go to the bathroom. Right. Uh, you know, that's they usually have a water fountain or something, so you can refill your water bottles. Um, and the bathrooms are available because a lot of times, you know, on some of these places, it's you know, 25 miles back to the last bathroom. So this uh, this just makes things easy for a couple of emergency plans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I would think that I would think it would be advisable, particularly with the plan to run a rail trail through here. That's something you kind of need, Larry. Yeah, I do think it's a uh, future discussion that we need to have. Is uh, yeah, we, we need to know how we're going to assist in, in keeping this museum open. I mean, we're spending right. a lot of money on a building. It would be ridiculous, and I would feel foolish to I, to I spend all the money on this building and then have it closed up except from noon to four on Saturday. Right. Um, um, so. I, I, yeah, that's, we'll probably have to discuss something like that with the Historical Society. Yeah. And, and EDC, because, right. you know, that's going to be a draw to town. So. And that's, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> business card exchange will be this Wednesday, 4.30 to 6.30, next door in the Hive location. Big um, event. i got to tell you, every this, year this that is, is the biggest, nicest business card exchange the town has. Do town staff does a wonderful this. job. Yeah, I was going to say, town a staff. Lot of food. Yeah. And a lot, and a lot of food. A lot of good food to eat. Yeah, they have to, people don't realize what goes in those events, they have to call people. But I think this year you're going to get some assistance, and I hope so. Right. For everybody. But for years, the town staff has ran around, made the phone calls, secured the food, picked the food up, made sure it was here, came here, around, arranged all the caterers, made sure it was laid out, made sure decorated. people were served, decorated, make sure it was cleaned up afterwards, and kept a smiling face during the whole thing. So it's and, a great and every Thanks And every know. time EDC asked if they could help, they were told just get out of the way and be here at 430. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We're we going we gonna to let people help. Are those, are those <laughs> I was just I was sitting here thinking this. Are those Japanese lanterns from last, last year's, year's business card exchange? Have they, they, they been they hanging up since then? So lovely. <laughs> 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 okay. That's okay, and that, that uh, is sponsored by EDC and the Greater Mount Area Chamber oh. of Commerce. Um, it's a paper if you have if you have an ornament if you've gotten your your Mount Airy ornament for this year good for you but if you don't get one soon they're going to be out I was I was talking to Katie the other they day they were sold she, out last year she she said she's just about out so you better get on it if you want one um, our next meeting will be on Wednesday January the 24th 2018 7 p.m. town hall because we, right. we, we don't do a Christmas one. Sanitation recycling? He's uh, not done. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Uh, <laughs> one more. The, the Planning Commission, we had a meeting on November the 20th, 2017, which is Monday evening. Individuals interested in making comment on the choice of downtown master plan vendors should contact Heather or Monica or Tom, I believe. You want not this time. You want to choice of Barney? Oh, it's Barney. Sorry, Tom. Tom's going to end up with it anyways. Um, and that, that's, that's pretty much the most important thing that we discussed. Um, the next meeting will be January the 29th, 2018, 7 p.m. Town Hall. That's my report. All that's right. Uh, sanitation Recycling and Sustainable Maryland. Jason. Um, we did not have a Sustainable Maryland, and our next meeting will be February 21st um, here at Town Hall. We did have Recycling Sanitation. Um, mostly talked about um, Recycle Coach, our mobile app, um, and talking about users versus subscribers and how that was going along. Uh, currently, right now, we are at 106 subscribers, 236 users. Um, the other big discussion that we had was uh, we are looking at ways of reducing the amount of trash that. Um, Mount Airy residents uh, create and um, how much is allowed right now um, in, in our ordinance. It is uh, 120 gallons per week, which is essentially two of the 60 gallon trash cans. Um, and we're looking at making sure that we can 
somehow reduce that uh, as that I just signed off probably a $18,000 uh, bill from the landfill, but also um, looking at um, reducing the costs that, it, uh, that the town incurs uh, by paying the trash collectors to come around and collect that up. Um, so our discussions right now are, are leading to a test neighborhood within um, Mount Airy and having, uh, if, uh, you know, the town of Ocean City has that collection arm that grabs a trash can and does it in a one user operator. Um, and so our discussions are going around that in looking at doing a test neighborhood uh, to see what kind of impact that would have I think um, you would need to provide town, trash so cans at that point. We've already looked okay. at that cost as well. So um, we are, the, t the test neighborhood would be provided those cans just to do the test. Yeah, cool but idea. eventually we would need to then purchase new cans um, for the entire town, which we've already talked about that. Um, but looking at reducing costs in, in other ways. So um, our next meeting is January 17th uh, here at Town Hall. And that concludes my report. Uh, one thing that I remember coming up at MML one year was one of the sanitation companies, I guess, had seen that we had passed an ordinance with, I guess, it was the 120-gallon thing. Yeah. And they had asked where we got that number from. I've just learned from you it was 260 galloners. Right. Because I think, I'm guessing, as I recall, she mentioned that that was kind of an odd size for standardized cans. So we may have to change the, so if we get a standardized right. can, we may have to change our ordinance because we may not find a can in that size. That like was the impression the, we got. Right. And so the J&J uh, &J trash uh, collection has the can for that arm that would match. Okay. But we would need to look at, just for the test neighborhood, we wouldn't necessarily right. uh, ultimately change the ordinance. It would be written in that we were doing this test neighborhood <laughs> for so long, but then eventually we would change the ordinance if the cost proved well enough that we could reduce costs. Okay. Sounds good, Jason. Uh, uh, good idea. Peter, um, I, it wasn't that long ago <coughs> that sanitation recycling, because it was when I was on, um, reduced that 120 gallons. It used to be 180 gallons. Okay. And that, so that was reduced within the last five years. Yeah. Like I said, I just remember coming up at MML because one, right. one of the contractors was basically like, you know, that's not really a can size. Where did you get right. that? <laughs> So, so, all right, well, good. Uh, streets and roads, Scott. Um, so, streets and roads had no meeting during the month of November. Our next meeting, December 28th at 7 p.m. Um, the only other thing, I'll just hand this out since we're not discussing it, but it was brought up. If anybody wants to know any of the background uh, for Century Drive and uh, all the different ordinances and everything else, that's right. the information. I think I gave out one of the extra ones with my questions on it. That one. Is that the report? That's it. All right. Uh, water and sewer also did not meet um, in December. Uh, our, I'm, no, actually, our meeting would have been. Actually, you're right. We're not meeting in December, which is two days. We're not meeting two days from now, which would be our meeting. You're correct. Um, we did have um, a November meeting, but it was before our November council meeting, so we've already been there. Um, our last meeting was November 1st. Our last council meeting was November 6th, so water and sewer already hit that. Um, our December meeting would be the 6th, which we are not having. Our next meeting will be January 3rd, 2018. Um, we've just gotten the town audit back, uh, so I anticipate we will be looking at uh, rate structures at that point. So if anybody's interested in that, please show up. Uh, water and uh, town administrator, Monica, anything particular? Um, I have uh, something to report for Holly. We got a safety award this year. I'll, I'll let you pass okay. that around. So we got an Iowa safety um, award this year and it is based on the following criteria. That we had reported no lost time claims for the preceding year, that we have a lag time of 90% or better. See this word doc? In the one to three day range. Uh, we have a loss ratio of 40% or less, and we've only had one claim reported in the past 36 months. Wow. So that was good. Holly and I accepted the award. They came down here and gave it to us. Okay. So Pays off not hiring clumsy staff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Tom, town attorney, Tom. Um, on the Marydale uh, stormwater management, uh, we have uh, come to an agreement, I think, with the county as to the area of disturbance for the upgrade to the stormwater management pond for the town to take over. So we should be filing a motion with the court very soon. Uh, I'm waiting on basically the engineering drawing from the county as well as the meets and bounds description of what the town will take uh, to fix up that stormwater management pond. Uh, in addition, I worked on the cha various changes to uh, Ordinance 2017-15, as well as an issue on parking that has come up with uh, the pending sale of uh, basically Iliano uh, Plaza. Last thing I want to remind everybody about is that the it is soon to be time uh, again for us to go through our uh, every other year water allocation procedure. Uh, that begins on January 15th with a report from the town engineer with the approval of the mayor uh, uh, to uh, issue a recommendation as to what the available water and sewer capacity yield should be for the next two years. And uh, also at its January meeting, the Planning Commission is supposed to set the what we call the priority areas. This would be an allocation category uh, where uh, the town deems it a priority to direct uh, future uh, development and then there are various deadlines after that that flow through the February March and ultimately the April meeting it's at the April meeting where the town council can approve modify or disapprove the uh, allocation of water uh, among various of our uh, allocation categories uh, as will ultimately be recommended by the Planning Commission so just as a reminder uh, come the turn of the year, uh, th this water allocation procedure that we've been through twice now, I think, um, will be upon us. So that's that's my report. The um, Dimliano Plaza sale is that up on Main Street, or is that the one Green over Turtles. Green? No, no, or is that Green Turtle? It's, it's the old main house and the uh, Bank of America. So the end, Monterey Inn. Marion, Marion, it's that plaza. Okay, all right. So the, the plaza that's on Main Street. Okay, that are not owned gotcha. by Bank of, uh, of America are being sold to two separate um, buyers. Okay, um, just what cares which one it is. Okay, I guess next up is we. I will move that we go into a closed meeting, and that we be adjourned when that closed meeting takes place. The purpose of the closed meeting is to discuss appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal and all the other stuff dealing with appointees, employees, and officers. Is that the only topic that we need on that closed agenda? Okay. I will make the motion to have a second. I see Bob seconding it. Okay. Uh, King? Aye. Poirier? Aye. Help? Aye. Strong? Aye. Hushauer? Aye. Okay, everybody, we're eyes. So we will start in about five minutes when everybody gets shuffled. Okay. Did you need that? That was your copy.